Shabbat Shalom, my friends. This is Rabbi Yitzchak Teichtel from Chabad of Nashville, here to share with you a thought for the week. A short while back, I had the opportunity to meet a very fine woman who was a Holocaust survivor, and she was the last one of a group of friends. Years ago, she was interviewed for a series on the Holocaust by Steven Spielberg. One of her granddaughters sent me a link to this very special interview. Seeing the emotions as she, as she discussed her childhood really touches your heart when watching this video. Yet there was something she said that really got to me. She was describing the last time she saw her older sister leaving with her fiancé to Russia, where his family was. She was very close to her sister. And that goodbye at that train station still made her cry so many years later. This was in 1939, and the Nazis had already taken over. They had seen the Nazis gather the Torah scrolls and the holy books from the synagogue across from where they were staying, and the Nazis burnt them in the center of the street. They heard stories of work camps, and her sister just wanted to leave. Finally, in 1941, as things got really bad in Russia, they applied to come back to Poland unaware of what the Nazis were already doing. However, the Russians never planned to let these Polish citizens leave. And instead, they were sent to Siberia from where they were never heard of again. Her last letter stated, we are leaving, but we don't know to where. Her mother always hoped to one day see her daughter again. And so despite their hunger and limited ratios in the ghetto, every single night they would set an empty plate for her missing sister at the dinner table. What she said next really hit a chord within me. And she said, until this day, I walk around. I look at women. I would like to see my sister's face. And my first thought was how painful this must have been to never have been able to forget, to always hold this pain of her long lost sister within her heart. Quickly after that thought came a much greater realization. Wow, what unbelievable strength this Holocaust survivor had. She never lost hope. Despite the many years, despite the different land, that despite the odds of survival in a Russian labor camp in Siberia, she never lost hope of being reunited with the sister she still loved so much. Can you imagine? 50 years later, as she walks down the street or inside a store, what is she thinking about? Maybe today will be the day where a miracle happens. Maybe today will be the day that I just see my sister standing next to me in the local Publix or Kroger. This, my friends, is the epitome of what it means to be a Jew, to be a believer, no matter how unlikely, no matter how great the odds are against you, to look at the stars, to believe in miracles. Friends, the Talmud tells us that even in the midst of the most severe Egyptian oppression, the Jews are described as believers, the sons of believers. For the Jews believed in the possibility of redemption from Egypt because they had inherited an unbelievable power, ability to believe, no matter what. The very first Jew, Abraham, our forefather. He was our great, 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 great grandfather, was the ultimate believer. He stood up against tremendous odds, yet he never lost faith. Not when he was thrown into a fiery furnace by the king Nimrod, who disliked him. Nor when he, was, when he had to travel to unknown lands or deal with famine. Not when he went to war against the four mightiest kings alive. Nor when he was already 99 years old and was promised a child. Even when our forefather Abraham is commanded after giving birth to a child at 99, he's then commanded to bring his one and only heir, the future of his religion, 
and his life's work. Who was that? Isaac. Bring him up as a sacrifice to God. We read in the Torah, the Shabbat. Abraham never gets disillusioned or lost. He never loses his faith. Yet, Isaac was the future of everything Abraham had built. And now he's being commanded to sacrifice him. Friends, how could that be? Where's the rationale? Comes the Midrash and tells us that when Abraham told his servant who was traveling with him that he's going to offer sacrifices over there, Abraham is actually talking to himself. He was saying, when I get there, I will see how God intends for me to fulfill my mission without an heir or a successor. And although I don't see how it's possible for me to lose my son and yet return and continue my life's mission without Isaac at my side, yet I believe. I believe without any doubt that God's plan will be fulfilled. And he tells his servant, and then after we bring the offerings, we will return to you. What was he saying? We will return to you if Isaac's going to be an offering. It made no sense. The chance of another son being born was so small. Abraham believed, no matter the odds. Friends, I consider myself a fairly big believer in miracles and in the unlimited power of God. Yet I am in awe of a woman who never lost her hope her entire life, who never stopped looking at strangers' faces, wondering if the woman standing in front of her online might just be the sister she had always loved. Yes, many feel that things are pretty bad now, Many feel the world is getting darker, more selfish, more evil, and more distant from God. Yes, but I am a believer. I believe in miracles, no matter the odds. And I encourage you, my friend, to believe in miracles too. Shabbat Shalom.